by the end of this lesson, you would have understood what GraphQL is and how to use it in the Spring framework. If you understand how REST APIs work, then you should understand how GraphQL works. Once you understand how REST API works, you will know how to use your knowledge in understanding GraphQL. Imagine you had a database that stored the name, creator, year created, and rank of programming languages. It doesn't matter if you have a database in MySQL or even MongoDB. What matters is that you describe your data and the structure to GraphQL. When you query, you ask for what you want. We go to Spring Initializer to start our project. We're going to use Java, of course. You can name your group an artifact, anything you want. For my group, I'm calling it lemobit.academy. For the artifact, which is like the name of the project, I would call it Laptop GraphQL Server. For our dependency, I need Spring Web. And that's all I need for now. So we click on Generate. Then I open it using IntelliJ. Of course, you mustn't use it. You can use Eclipse or any other IDE that you're comfortable with. So now, This will be a plain old Java object class that will be used in our database. So our database will contain a list of laptops. The laptop will have an ID, name, price, and RAM size. So now let's create the database we we'll create a package called db. And then I'll create another class called dummy laptop db. I'll enable Java 11 because I want to use Java 11. So our list here holds a list of laptop objects ranging with IDs from 1 to 10, different prices and different RAM sizes. In this same class, I will have different methods that when called will return what is requested. For get all laptops, it will return all the laptops. Get laptop by ID, we check for a laptop that has the ID. It returns an optional of laptop. Get laptop less than gets the laptops that have a price less than that that was passed in the argument. Delete laptop, we collect an ID and delete the laptop that has the ID. Your GraphQL server uses a schema to describe the shape of your data graph. 
it describes the functionality available to the client's applications that connect to it. For example, if you have a class named student that had name and age, you could have a schema that described that structure. We are creating a new file called schema.graphqls in our resource folder. This would be where our schema would be defined. Your GraphQL file should end with GraphQLs. For the type, we will have our laptop, which will imitate the laptop class we have. A GraphQL operation can either be a read or write operation. A GraphQL query is used to read values, while a mutation is used to write or post values. The query type defines exactly which GraphQL query the client can execute against. Each field in the GraphQL query type defines a name and a return type of the query. The return types surrounded by a square bracket represent return types that are arrays, such as the get all laptops field. Fields such as get laptop by ID allow you to pass an argument when making a query. The mutation type is actually similar to the query. The mutation type defines a single available mutation in this case, delete laptop. It accepts an ID and returns a laptop noun. We would create another package. We would call it GraphQL because this is where we have some classes that deal with GraphQL. The first class we're going to create is a data fetcher class. A data fetcher is responsible for returning a data value back for a given GraphQL field. So now we'll have our data fetcher for get all laptops. It will return a data fetcher and when called, it will call the get all laptops from the database. We also have the one for get laptop by ID. Let us create a class called GraphQL Provider. This GraphQL Provider class will have the init method, which will create the GraphQL instance. This is where we will build everything and finish setting everything up. The first method we will get is called our mutation builder. This method is going to return type runtime wiring. The type runtime wiring is the specification of data fetchers and possible type resolvers for a given type name. This is used by runtime wiring to wire together a functional GraphQL schema. So here we tell it that when the delete laptop field name is called from the GraphQL mutation, the delete laptop method from the laptop data fetcher should be called. Now, when we want to call the delete laptop, remember that we actually put an argument, which was ID when we were creating the delete laptop method. Now we'll go and remove that because we do not need that. So I remove the one for get laptop by ID and remove those also for get laptop less than.
and the lit laptop. Now, after we are done with the mutation builder, the next guy we need to handle is our query builder. Our query builder will just resemble the mutation builder. The only difference is that because we have more query field names, we will have more lines of code in our query builder. Next, we create a method build wiring that returns runtime wiring. The runtime wiring uses the type runtime wiring to wire together a functional GraphQL schema. We then create a private method build schema which accepts the schema as a string. Type definition registry is the past version of our schema file. Schema generator combines the type definition registry with the runtime wiring to actually make the GraphQL schema. Now we create a private GraphQL variable. It is going to be initialized by our init method, which we would create shortly. This GraphQL instance would be exposed as a spring bin via the GraphQL method. We would annotate it with bin. We create our method init and annotate it with post construct. Post construct is used on a method that needs to be executed after dependency injection. We use Guava resources to read the file from our class path. In this case, it is schema.graphqls. We then create a GraphQL schema and GraphQL instance. Right now, our application is ready to run and we are ready to blast off. I am going to use GraphQL Playground to access the GraphQL server. GraphQL Playground is an interactive graph <laughs> GraphQL Playground is an interactive GraphQL IDE. I'll put it in the description below. So we can run the program and then I'll input the URL, which is our normal localhost the port slash GraphQL. If you notice, the schema on our GraphQL playground resembles the schema which we described in our schema.graphqls. So now let's, let's perform a query. The first query we will perform will be the all laptops query. Where we query the server to give us all the laptops. But as we query, let us demand for the things we want. I want the ID, the name, the price, and the RAM. So we query. Now you can see all our elements, the laptops, we are outputted. I can edit the query such that I want just the name and the price. You can edit it further in case you just want the name. This gives us flexibility. If it was a REST API, you get what you need to get, whether you want it or not. So now let's get our laptop by ID. Remember the get by ID requires an argument. So we pass in the ID. In this case, ID tree and we want just the name and the RAM. 
oops, we have an error. That is because we need to use integer that pass int. The ID comes as a string. So let's run it again. Okay, so now we have the name and the RAM. Let's test that other method. Laptop less than price. So let's try our mutation, which we use to delete a laptop. Of course, because our mutation receives an ID and the ID is passed as a string, I suspect we will have the same error we had before. But let's go on. So let's say we want to delete the laptop with ID. Oops, we have the error. So let's go and make it integer.passInt. All right. Now it tells us we can't edit because I used list of and that returns an immutable list. So let's use list.new. List.new array list. This is from the Guava library. So now let's try to delete Alienware, which was in position three. You can see it returned the name of the deleted laptop. If we query everyone again, get all laptops. We want the name and the ID. You wouldn't see Alienware again. Please note the ID here in the query represents the position in the list, not necessarily the ID in the the ID associated with that laptop. So for example, if I say delete ID2, in this list, the element with position 2 is actually MacBook. So if I run it, it will return MacBook, which was deleted. So we can query the database for all the laptops again and we will see my book is not there. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please consider giving this video a like so that others can see it and consider subscribing because we plan to put more tutorials like this on Lemobit Academy.